Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. MashaAllah, the sisters answer the salam much better than the brothers. In the evening, I had a talk at the masjid. I said, Assalamu alaikum. So I told them, I know we are fasting, but still, let's try it again. MashaAllah, sisters are active. Alhamdulillah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل صلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد. We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa taala who is our Creator, Sustainer, Nourisher, Protector, and Curer. We ask Allah azza wa jal to shower His choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, his family members, his companions, and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Before I begin, I would like to put forward uh, a disclaimer, and that is that I am in no position at all to advise parents because I am not an experienced parent. I haven't seen my grandchildren as yet. But I'm a young parent. I have two sons, two little guys. They're quite a handful. One is Jibreel and the other is Mikael. One is six years old and the other is three years old. So uh, the chef wanted me to share a few words with you all. So here I am. There are much more experienced uh, shiukh uh, with me, mashallah. Uh, but then, it, uh, will of Allah that I should speak a few words, so I'm speaking on behalf of them, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm not here to advise anybody, I'm just here to share a few pieces of advice <coughs> that I apply in my own life. And inshallah ta'ala, uh, it might be beneficial for you all as well, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, earlier in the evening, um, I came to the school and they played a very nice uh, video presentation about this school, mashallah. And uh, I was very impressed. I met the children as well. And uh, to tell you the truth, uh, it was pretty impressive. I mean, they had very, uh, in, you know, intriguing questions that they asked me. And uh, even Alhamdulillah, I was very impressed by their command of English. So I think the school is doing a fantastic uh, job. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept the brothers and sisters who are involved. And I also ask Allah azza wa jal to take this school from strength to strength. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, in regard to our children, children are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a huge blessing. Allah azza wa jal, he states in the noble Quran, al-mal wal-banoon, zinat al hayat al-dunya, that your children, your wealth, are after all, adornment of this worldly life. In other words, they are something that make this worldly life uh, beautiful. So this is something for Muslims as well as non-Muslims, but still you understand we are very closely attached to our children, we love our children, and children are a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At times parents who have five, six children, they might find it a little difficult to understand that it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to understand how great a blessing it is, you must ask a couple who don't have children who are yearning for children, who make so much of dua. At times there are so many people who contact me and they ask me, Shaykh, is there like any magic dua that we can read for children, you know? But in reality, we don't have anything. We have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, you don't have any special, specific duas to read to, to uh, uh, you know, uh, for, your, uh, for, the, for a family to get children. You have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jal uh, will, inshallah wa ta'ala, bless you with the children. But if you speak to such individuals, that's when you realize what a great blessing these beautiful children that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us all with are. But now when you talk about blessings, Blessings always come with strings attached. In other words, you are going to be questioned about these blessings by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and especially your children because they are a blessing as well as a responsibility. They are a responsibility that we must fulfill unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must look after them, we must nurture them, we must bring them up. These are all responsibilities upon as parents, so we must look after our children. So to touch a few pointers, like I said earlier, uh, that I try to bring in my life as much as possible, and I hope that it will be beneficial for you all as well. I would like to start off with salah, prayer. Look at Luqman, alayhi salatu wasalam. Luqman al-Hakim, he was known as Luqman the wise. He advises his son, his own son. This is parental advice that he is giving his son. يَا بُنَيَّ أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَانْهَانِ الْمُنْكَرِ He says, 
O oh my beloved son, O oh my beloved son. You know, you can talk about this ayah, you can break it down, you can uh, see how he addresses his son, but that's not the point. I just want to highlight a salah. He says, Aqim is salah, establish salah. So at times we find it, uh, you know, where our children are at times being uh, rebellious, they're not listening to us, they're stubborn, uh, and when you tell them to do something, perhaps they, you know, retort back. We should not blame the children, we should blame ourselves. Because point number two, we need to become role models for our children. We need to become role models for our children. You see, for example, as fathers, our children look at us like superheroes, like, you know, like Superman. They look at us. So we need to become like Superman in the sense, I'm talking about it in a good sense, we need to become role models for our children so that they look up to us and they'll yearn to be like us. Say for example, if you have a father who is very abusive, who smokes, there is a high possibility that the child in the future, except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills otherwise, the child also may take that dark path because his father was that kind of a role model for him. That's the example the father set for him. And likewise mothers, because children grow up in the laps of their mothers. It always uh, boils down to how a mother treats a child. You know, a, a very intriguing question. One of the children at the school asked me earlier in the evening, uh, Sheikh, we found out that you memorized the Quran at the age of 14. What inspired you to memorize? I, I was actually very impressed by the question. What inspired you to memorize the Quran? And I, just, I was just sharing, uh, you know, uh, my childhood with the students and I told them that at a very young age I would say from the time I was born it was my mother's intention that I should take this path that I should take this path somewhere down the line I actually wanted to become a computer engineer a, a, a software engineer but here I am now I have memorized the Quran and I have uh, you know I, I, I spent some time studying about Islam and now I am you know calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I would say you know I'm trying to do it 24-7 so I would say that it, this boils down to my mother's intention as well as my father's du'as. So we as parents, we need to inculcate these things in our children. We need to make du'a for them. We need to push them uh, towards goodness. And we must become role models. At times, you know, uh, the third point uh, is that we must secure a good environment. And that is in regard to, for example, some parents, they, they secure a good school for their children. And they expect the school to do everything. They expect the school to do everything. I mean, they're not worried about the environment at home. They're not worried about their relationship with their children. They expect that the child should go to a good school and then, you know, overnight become just amazing, which is not something possible. I mean, this environment has to be maintained at home. There should be a good relationship between a parent and child. That's when a child flourishes and that's when a child grows up to become a productive individual to society and this is what we need today today what's happening is that at times we become we adults we become so selfish that at times we fight with our spouses our homes are broken we don't spend time with our children and so what more can you expect from such houses other than broken children psychologically disturbed children you can't blame those innocent children. Tomorrow they are going to come out psychologically disturbed because they're coming from broken homes. Their parents did not give enough time for them. But on the other hand, if it is a house that is built upon love, that is built upon love, each time the child comes home and sees both the parents, you know, full of love towards one another, and they, show, they shower the child with love as well, they spend time with the children, that affects the child in such an amazing way. You see, children need quality time. Our children need our presence, as they say. Our children need our presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-C-E, -E -E, presence, more than presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S. -E our children need our presence more than our presence. We at times try to make up for the loss that we are not there by giving them presents, gifts, toys. But they don't need that. They need quality time from us. They want us to spend time with them. They want us to have a good relationship with them, talk to them, ask them about their problems, ask them about how they spend their day at school, etc. But most of the time, you know, even though we live in such a modern era where we have so many uh, gadgets and so many things to make so, life so much more easier, we still don't have time to spend with our family, with our children. This is a very sad uh, issue that is gripping uh, families all around the world. We must try to make time for our children. 
that's when we'll be able to build a good relationship with them. And I'm not just talking about just, just time. I mean, sometimes you, know, you can be seated with your child and playing with your phone or, or, or you know, uh, clicking away, but not concentrating with your child. Quality time is necessary. Look at the two prophets, alayhi salatu wa salam. Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, and I'll talk to you about the story of Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. You see the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam. This is something that I touched on at uh, Masjid Ikhlas uh, a while ago in the evening. If you look at the life of Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, he went through so many challenges from day one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put him through so many challenges. Innocent young little Yusuf, his brethren, his own brothers, his own blood, they go and dump him into a well. They go and dump him into a well. And does it end there? From the well, what happens? A caravan comes by and does that caravan rescue little Yusuf? Mm-hmm. No. They take him captive and they take him to some foreign land and sell him as a slave. You and I, we are all free, free individuals. Just imagine tomorrow if somebody just kidnaps you and sells you as a slave. How would you feel? He was a little young boy, torn away from his beloved father. He was the apple of the eye of his father. He was torn away from his father, taken and sold as a slave. And did it end there? No. Now comes about a, a minister, Aziz Umis, and he buys Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, as a slave, takes him home. And after some time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the story in the noble Quran. After he grows up, now he is an adolescent. What happens? The lady of the house, the mistress of the house, tries to seduce him. Another challenge. Another challenge. Another trial. She tries to seduce Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. Uh, she locks all the doors and she had so many advantages. She was the mistress. He was a slave. She commands him. Come to me. She commands him. But then he stood his ground. He was an adolescent. And as you all know, teenagers, their hormones are all over the place. If he had wanted, he could have indulged in haram the doors are locked and look at the quran not just locked she double bolted the doors she made sure all the doors are locked and she was a rich beautiful lady what's stopping yusuf but then he stood his ground allah forbid indeed uh, your husband he admonishes the lady your husband my master he has made life good for me and then he admonishes the lady but then she still tries to uh, seduce him by tearing his shirt and then the master comes and finds out and then eventually the master himself, Aziz Umis, said he finds out that his wife was at fault and that story ends there. But does Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam's trials end there? No. He was imprisoned after that. He was imprisoned. And this was the same lady. As you all know, I'm sure you all are aware of the story. She caught, because all the ladies of the town now started to, you know how the ladies talk, right? So all the ladies of the town started to talk bad about her. And she wanted to prove her point. She invited all of the ladies, something for like a tarawis. I just now found out what tarawis is. Just eating, eating. I thought tarawis is tarawih, but you see, mashallah, tarawis is a nice spread of food. So uh, she invited all of them for a nice meal and she gave them fruits and she gave them knives and she made Yusuf والسلام, come in front of them. What did they do? They cut their hands. This individual is not a human being. He is an angel. They were just blown away by the handsomeness of Yusuf and then at that point she threatens Yusuf that is either prison or you must indulge in what I want you to indulge in. Prison is better for me. Now, the point that I wish to highlight, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, is that look, at every point, Yusuf والسلام, stood his ground and he adopted taqwa, fear and consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? And from where did this come from? That little period of time that he spent with his father, Ya'qub alayhi salatu wasalam. A short period. As you all remember, at the very beginning of the ayah, uh, surah, he goes to his father and what does he say? Inni ra'aytu ahada ashara kawkaban wa shamsa wal qamara ra'aytuhum li sajideen. His father tells him, Qala ya bunayya la taqusus ru'yaka ala ikhwatik. The father and son had a very good relationship. As you can see, he goes and tells his father everything and his father advises him accordingly. That short period of time that little Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam, at that time that he spent with his father was such you could say such a 
uh, you know, time period full of quality time, that that had a lifelong effect on Yusuf alayhi salatu wasalam. On the other hand, look at the son of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. How long did Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam live on the face of this earth? He lived for 1,780 years according to most of the historians like Imam Ibn Kathir rahimahullah and others. Imam Ibn Kathir mentions this in al bidayah wa Nihayah. 1,780 years. And the period of da'wah, the period of da'wah, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, 950 years. 950 years, Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. After such a long period, his son was with him. His son, this, son, uh, this son's name is, uh, scholars of history mention, was either Yam or Kan'an. This particular son was with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam throughout that long period. And at the last point, I'm sure you are all aware of the story, when the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down, the believers were all on the ship, and the ship was thrown about, the waves were like mountains. At that time, you know, Nuh wasalam, sees his son floundering in the water, and he cries out to him, my son, come aboard, irkab ma'ana, come aboard, come aboard, just, you know, come aboard and be, you, you can save yourself. And what was his obstinate, what was his arrogant reply? قَالَ سَآوِي إِلَى جَبَلِي يَعْصِمُنِي مِنَ الْمَهَانِ You know what? I'll just climb that mountain and I'll save myself from the water. I'll climb the mountain. He, he witnessed everything. They were mocking Nuh when he was building that ship in the middle of a desert. They were saying, where is the water and why are you building a ship in the middle of the desert? And now he's witnessing the water, وَفَارَتَ nur the water coming out from this, the core of the earth and the heavens opening up and all the water coming from all over the place. He's witnessing such a huge sign from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But yet he didn't accept it. It was a trial for Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. But my point here is, look, they spent so much of time together, but still it did not have an effect on the son of Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we must spend quality time with our children, advising them, guiding them towards that which is good. So insha'Allah ta'ala, tomorrow they will become productive assets to society. That's what we need. We need productive assets to our community, to build our community, to take our community forward, to inspire our community and take it forward. We need productive individuals. And just one individual is enough. For that, each one of us, we must try to make our children that. I'll wrap off and I'll just mention one story and I'll wrap off. There was once a man. He had just one son who he loved very dearly. He loved very dearly. And he used to spend quality time. You know, he used to make time out of his schedule. He was a busy individual, but he used to make time out of his busy schedule. And he used to spend quality time with his little son every single day after he got home from work. Every single day. They used to play. They used to, you know, uh, you know talk, talk about things. They used to spend quality time. Now, one day what happened was uh, he got a little busy at work. And he realized that by the time he goes home, he will not be able to spend that usual quality time that he spends with his child. So he was wondering what to do because he did not want to disappoint his son. So he was thinking how he can keep his son preoccupied. Whilst he was thinking and contemplating, his eyes fell on a world map. A world map, large scale one, you know, on his office table perhaps. The minute he saw the map, an idea popped in his mind. He tore the map from the book Okay, the map, the world map, it is a large scale sized map. And he tore it into bits and pieces. He tore it into bits and pieces. Now his whole idea was that he wanted to get home and give these bits and pieces to his son as a puzzle. And he wanted him to complete the puzzle. In other words, complete the world map. So he was very happy. He put the bits and pieces in his pocket and he goes home. Now when he went home, his son comes running to him, expecting the usual quality time that he's going to spend with his father. Uh, but then uh, the father said, look son, today we're going to do something different. But he, didn't know, he didn't want to disappoint him. He said, we're going to do something different. I bought you a new toy today. Oh wow, what's the toy dad, what's the toy? Then the father took out the bits and pieces of uh, that map and he gave it to him, son, this is a jigsaw puzzle. If you can put this jigsaw puzzle in place, I have a gift for you. If you can put this jigsaw puzzle in place. This is the world map. I want you to put the jigsaw puzzle in place. Now the father was pretty confident that this was an impossible task. I mean, if I were to ask you, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't know how to put the world map. I mean, where would you put Pacific Ocean? I'm just saying. 
I mean, I don't know. I mean, if a student is really good in geography, yeah, they can try. But even I would fail at it. If you just have bits and pieces. Where are you to fit the map? Where are the continents going to come? So it's a tough task. So the father was pretty confident that the son is going to be engrossed and busy with this for some time, and that would provide him enough and more time to finish his work and get back to his son. So he gives him the bits and pieces of paper, and he goes into his study. He goes into his office. Lo and behold, not even 10 minutes, the boy comes running to the father with the map complete. The father was just blown away. He told the boy, son, I know you're, that you are intelligent, but I didn't know that you are this intelligent. How on earth did you complete the map so fast? The boy said, well, dad, you know, it was simple, actually. I flipped the paper the other side, and there was the body of a man. I put his head in place, I put his hands in place, I put his body in place, I put his legs in place, and I flipped it the other side, the world came about. I know it's funny, but then the father said, Son, today you have taught me a great lesson. And that is, if man comes right, the world comes right. If man comes right, the world comes right. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we need upright individuals who will become huge assets to society. So please, try to spend as much time with your children, working on them, and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your children. A hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the dua of a parent, there is no barrier between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the parent. Make as much dua as possible for your children, work on them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our children, and may he azza wa jal bless those who don't have children with beautiful children, and may he azza wa jal, just as how he unites us here at this beautiful school, may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah with our beloved Prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Amin wa akhir da'wa yan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakum wa akhir.